When you gotta go, you gotta go. Unless you can't go because the law says so. Why can't we all just get along? Ophelia Pastrana here and welcome to Gender Act, our weekly series on pop culture gender talk. Now either you stand for number one or you sit for number two. And these are the main rules for regular bathroom use we all learn at home. But for something as basic as this, there seems to be a lot of discussion and that's legal discussion. If lawmakers in Florida, Minnesota, Texas, Nevada and Kentucky have their way, transgender people will be breaking the law when using the bathroom of a choice. Bear in mind that this means that just as society generally allows people to choose their gender identity, it seems peeing is just not part of this deal. Some of these proposed bills would allow police to stop anyone they suspect is not using the public bathroom, shower or changing room that matches the sex on their birth certificate, and the accused would have to show proof of sex. If they don't have ID or if the sex on their ID doesn't match their gender identity, the offender could face up to 6 months jail and fines for up to $2,500. It's worth noting that these bills are under consideration as gender deviance is assumed to be a motivating force behind physical assault in bathrooms, an assumption that does not take into consideration the absolute zero registered transgender bathroom offenders in the United States for the past 15 years, or the fact that over 70% of transgender folk report in fact being harassed while using the bathroom. Now, gender segregated toilets are a source of difficulty for some people, for example, men caring for babies may find that only the woman's toilet has been fitted with a baby changing facility. People with disabilities who need assistance to use the restrooms have an additional problem if their helper is a different gender to themselves. So the issue begs the question, why are bathrooms gendered at all? One oft overlooked point of view considers that albeit the female restrooms have certain equipment fit for some body physiologies. Well, the male restrooms are actually capable of handling mostly all of human needs for relief, and thus what seems to be truly going on is wide open female segregation in public spaces. In fact, the first separate toilet facilities for men and women appeared at a ball in Paris in 1739, and until then, public restrooms such as they existed were generally gender neutral or marked for men only. In 1887, Massachusetts was the first state to pass a law mandating women's restrooms in workplaces with female employees, and as far as I can tell, well, this was a pretty good idea since bathrooms were men only at the time, and women, well, did not work. Factories and other places that had begun to employ women were refusing to install restrooms for women and even if the job market would have corrected itself eventually, in the meantime, working ladies had to be. Opening up bathrooms to everyone is common sense. Many activists in colleges, universities and federal spaces throughout the US are hosting shittings to prove this point. And who could argue with the shit? The way I see it, the more we face gender diverse situations, the more we develop our own sense of tolerance and acceptance. Now there is a lot of criticism to this point of view. Sexual assault survivors have raised concerns behind the creation or the existence of gender neutral bathrooms as they may give predators access to their potential victims. It's usually cisgender women that are concerned about cisgender men. But this idea balks when we look at the statistics which tell us the story of predators being mostly people that the victim already knows. And further, if an assailant wants to sexually harass a man or woman, why are we not screening for sexual orientation at the door? Lesbian women are granted unfettered access to the female restrooms after all. Now on the other hand, if security is at risk, then perhaps what makes sense is to separate the bathroom by body types in order to better our chances of self-defense. You can have big and tall people here and short and petite people elsewhere. My biggest concern at the moment would rather deal with the way male people are known to not clean the toilet seat when done. But this, however, is just a minor educational concern that definitely does not require a multi-state bathroom bill that has people policing your genitals and birth certificates prior to using the toilet. Now a couple of ideas might solve the problem nonetheless. One is to have separate stalls everywhere, regardless of which kind of toilet hardware is offered, and the hand washing areas are just common to everyone. Another is running a third bathroom, which resembles the family or handicapped options already offered, but it just bears the risk of making a separate but equal statement. Third idea would be to label the bathrooms as sit to pee or stand to pee. Now in all cases, all this bathroom hoopla would probably just be taken care of if people would stop it with being bathroom detectives and would much rather mind their own business. We are talking about a human physiological need, and this, of all places, is probably the worst one you could bring gender talk to. After all, Bathrooms are not gendered at home. Let me know what you think of this on Twitter or on Facebook. Everyone deserves to piss in peace. I'm Ophelia Pastrana, and hey, thanks for watching.